I ran marketing departments in corporate America for 10 years and then ran a digital agency for over another 10 years. So I know the roadmap to online success and that formula always includes producing content to share your message from your marketing message to sales and delivery. Hi, I'm Jennifer Neal and you're listening to The Content Toolbox. I believe the secret to finding and creating raving fans online is through you. In building relationships through stories that share who you really are, create genuine, crazy, raving fans that keep begging you to take their money. And on this podcast, we'll be talking strategies, tactics, tips, and more with myself and other industry experts. So buckle up and start your engines, cause it's go time. All right, welcome back to the show, everyone. I am super excited to introduce you to a good friend of mine, Miss Lisanne Murphy, who owns Midas Touch Social Advertising Agency. Basically, what that means is if you do anything with Facebook advertising, she's the girl you want to talk to. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> welcome, Lisanne. <laughs> Jen, thank you so much for having me on the show. It is seriously such a pleasure for us to be together in this formal capacity. We always have an opportunity to chill, but this is just ultra special. I love it. Absolutely. Uh, I have so been looking forward to this interview because I'm just like, oh, follow the brains. (laughs) Me too. Me too. And not just because of my brains, but because of your goodness. Just being with you is always, always a pleasure. Awesome. All right. Well, because I know a little bit about your history, but everybody else does not. Why don't you give us a little bit of your story and kind of how you ended up where you're at right now? Yeah, well, it's it's a really interesting one. And it's it's one that I like to share, not because I like talking about myself. I actually have a hard time talking about myself, but I like to share it because I have been all over the place, all over the place. Like I, I have worked in the public sector, in the private sector. I've worked in commission-based sales. I have worked in factories. I've worked in kitchens. I have worked for nonprofits. I really, really have done everything. And with each shift that I made, I always felt like there was something missing and like I was getting it wrong because I kept changing. And I was like, why can't I figure this out? And now, and not, and not to say that like I've arrived, congratulations to me, but I really feel like things are starting to come together for me. And unless I'd had those experiences in a lot of different areas, I don't know if I could say that. And so I'm grateful for all of the dimension that each opportunity that I've taken has given me to bring me to the point where I'm today. Now, I understand for a podcast, you're like, please be specific. Stop being so cryptic. So let me give you some stories. Um, what's really interesting that I that I haven't realized until recently is that I always had an entrepreneurial bug in me, if you will. And like any entrepreneur that's like had that, like they, they smile, they shake their head because like they know, they're like, yes, I've always had this in me. And So my earliest example of this is when I was in elementary school, I would take my allowance and I would go to the gas, the local gas station, and I would buy warheads. Do you remember those like disgusting sour candies that like have more chemicals and citric acid in them than like is should be humanly allowed to consume? Oh yeah. Those are so great. (laughs) They're so great. I haven't had one since. I probably should just because I, because I, because I, this is a story that I've been talking about recently because I just remembered it, but I used to go to the local gas station and buy those disgusting warheads and atomic, atomic Fireballs. uh, fireballs. Thank you. The red atomic fireballs, you know, that like if you swallowed them, you would die for sure. And you would die if you didn't swallow them because your mouth is on fire. Anyway, so I would go buy fireballs and warheads and I would take them to school and I would sell them to my friends for a profit. So like, you know, I'd buy them for like 10 cents and I'd sell them for 50 cents. And I just felt like the queen of the hill um, doing that. And then eventually the school found out that I was like reselling candy. And so they, you know, told me I couldn't do it anymore. But you know, even so, even as a young person, I was like always trying to think, you know, how can I give things to people that they want in a way where it's it's mutu- it's mutually beneficial? It's like it's a, it's a desired exchange, right? And then in middle school, when Titanic was the craze, I was really into art and I drew hand drawn with charcoal pictures of Leonardo DiCaprio and then would sell them to my googly eyed girlfriends who were just like dying and swooning over Jack. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. 
And, and then in high school, I, I'm, I'm a drummer. And so I taught private drum lessons. So like, I've, I've never had a traditional, like I, did, I never bagged groceries or mowed lawns or flipped burgers. And, and I mean, if anyone did, that's not to say that like one is better than another, but like my mind was just always like trying to do something different with talents that I already had. But I quickly got sucked into, you know, like you finish high school, you take the ACT, you go to college you get a job. And I really got sucked into that. And I love school. I'm not one to knock school. I think that school has a really, really important role in our development and in our society. And I mean, I have two degrees. And so, you know, I just, I I love school. And in fact, before I jumped into the entrepreneurial world, I was applying for PhD programs to study life callings. uh, Because I've just always been so passionate about why some people just feel so drawn to something that like they would do it for free. Like they, they don't even care to get paid for it. Like the money is just a bonus and enough to survive, but like they would, they'd love it and they do it for free. So, I mean, I'm, I was so into my education and my research that like I, I was even applying for PhD programs. And it was when I had a friend approach me and said, Hey, I want to start a company with you that I left that path to start this venture. And then like three months into it, she was diagnosed with cancer. And so we had to dissolve it, but just, just to say, long story short, how much, how much I love school. So anyway, I've done multiple entrepreneurial ventures, but it wasn't until I found Facebook ads that things really started coming together for me because I started these companies, but I always had a problem with leads. And I realized that no matter how great your business is, no matter how great your product is, no matter how awesome you are, if you do not have leads, your business will not survive. Right. And just like the saying, whoever has the gold makes the rules. Well, for business owners, leads are gold. Mm -hmm. And it's really what led me to that. And some, some divine intervention is what led me to to marketing specifically Facebook marketing. And as soon as I found it, my mind was just explosive with the power of the data that Facebook gives you and your ability to understand exactly where every penny is going and, and, and the faces that it's getting in front of and how people are interacting with your stuff. It just, it absolutely blew my mind. And so I started um, using Facebook ads to build um, my business and some friends businesses. And it was like, I all of a sudden became like a solution to so many people's problems. And it was like the coolest thing that like people actually want this. People actually want this skill that I have. And so it's just grown and developed. Plus I have a really analytical brain. And so like that analytics part of it with Facebook is really powerful. And then I also, my master's degree is in organizational behavior. So that human psychology piece. It's like Facebook is like a perfect blend of like data analytics and human psychology. And so it like brings those two loves of mine together. And, and, and we've just Facebook ads and I have been happily married ever since. So, (laughs) so yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a huge journey, but, um, but the entrepreneurial thing has always been in me and it really hasn't been until like the last couple of years that like, I've really felt like I'm in my jam. Um, and, and, and I'm really, I'm grateful for it. I really am. Oh my gosh. Okay. There's, there's a lot in there. Like let's dive in. So a yes, absolutely leads. You can have the best product or service or whatever in the world and still be completely broke because nobody's buying because they don't know where you are. You gotta have those leads. And I love me being of the nerd brain also. Um, (laughs) I love the data and the metrics and I know numbers are super overwhelming a lot for entrepreneurs in general, but working with somebody that not only understands it, but also thoroughly enjoys it and can see those patterns and understand, like you said, the psychology behind it, that is definitely what makes you so, so good at it. (laughs) And I have a question here. Once, like when you said, okay, I finally feel like I've, like I've arrived and I finally hit this. Like what I found is once I kind of finally found my, found my groove, then it was like everything just got easier. I don't know. Did you, have you experienced the same thing? Like it was so much less work. Yeah. Well, I I definitely feel like it has been easier in general. I, you know, just, just this past Sunday, I was writing in my journal about the power of clarity and the role that clarity has played in my life over the last year specifically. And yeah, I mean, for me, it's like when it clicks that that's like the environment for clarity to happen, you know? 
And when you have clarity, you can act and move forward with reckless abandonment. I mean, this year in particular for me has been just so powerful in terms of my ability to move forward, but it took so much effort. I mean, my 2019 was hard. It was really, really hard for me. And I, what I realized is that I was trying to build this massive business, but like who I was, was not fully put together. So it was like, I was trying to like win a marathon, like in a three-legged race or like with my arm tied behind my back or whatever. And I had to go through the steps to untie that arm and break out that leg so that I could run freely. And so much of that was physical work and mental work and, and coaching. Um, and so last year, um, was just, was a really, really big year for me in terms of, in terms of that. And so I want to make sure that it's like, we don't, we always underestimate the power of like, when we're whole inside, it makes everything easier. And that was, that's so, so, so true for me. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's okay. So this, this, like I was assuming, Oh, we're going to talk about Facebook ads or like your podcast, but, but you just brought up something that is, um, it's such a pervasive concept and, and it's, I know it's so easy to just ignore a lot, but that it's almost like you're, you have to master your own inner messaging and the, the content, like the message that you're telling yourself before you can really then share that message with, with everyone else. Is that? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll just be really, really clear with you. I mean, I, um, I'll, I'll just get really vulnerable, really vulnerable for a second. So Over the course of my master's degree and then my corporate job afterwards, I gained 70 pounds and I didn't like how I looked. I mean, I I loved me, but like, I just didn't really like how I looked. And because I didn't, it made it so I didn't want to get on lives and go live for my community. It made it so I didn't want to date and progress relationships forward. And so like everything stopped because I didn't like what I, who I saw in the mirror. And I allowed that to be an excuse for why I wasn't dating or why I wasn't putting myself out there as an influencer. And I was also, and I also had a lot of like resistance in terms of, for example, like Facebook ads, like it's a crowded space. I mean, I am not the only Facebook ads expert out there. There are so many. And so I was like, oh, it's just a, it's a bloody red ocean. And I don't really want to be known for that. I mean, I, w- I know that I was not put on this earth for Facebook ads. Like that is also very clear for me. And so I just had all this resistance of like, I didn't like how I looked and I didn't want to get on and like start talking about Facebook ads because I didn't want to be known as Facebook ads because it was already crowded and I didn't want to be squeezed out by, by some of the bigger players and things like that. And, and so these games just like, I just kept getting played And before I could tackle my business clarity, I had to tackle my personal clarity and really get my life in order and start eating clean and start sleeping regularly and exercise regularly. And last year, I mean, I just like focused probably 90% of my energy just on, on me. You know, I, I made enough to where I could really service my clients at a high level, but really focus on me, lost 70 pounds and just completely transformed who I am not who I am inside, but like how I felt about myself because I was finally taking care of me. And then I could tackle that business clarity. And what I realized is that, you know, I don't like, for example, Rachel Hollis, right? When she got her start, she started as a blogger and writing cookbooks, you know? And so like, I had to make a shift and be like, okay, well, like I'm really passionate about helping people make like, just wake up and making inspired decisions. But I think Facebook ads are my cookbook, you know, Mm -hmm. they are a very, very powerful tool that I understand. And I I can help many, many businesses grow with them, but it is a, it is the tool to build my platform for me to have a bigger, a much greater impact. And I feel like I'm already starting to on a small level because what I do uniquely in my agency is we really dive into the psychology of dream customers And that is what's making the biggest difference in the ads with my clients is we on a incredibly granular level dive into who are your customer archetypes is what I call them. And how do we discover where they're hanging out online and how do we reach them? Like I'm not just an ads manager, you know, I am a a customer manager, if you will. Um, And we find them with Facebook ads and that has really helped me. It's, it's fueling for me. And it also, blesses the lives of the entrepreneurs that I work with because 
they are realizing things about their target market and their customers and bringing higher quality people into their business than they ever have before, because it's not just, you know, most people write ads and they're like, do you have a sore, a sore shoulder, back pain, fatigue, lack of energy? Is your toe inflamed? If you're any of these things, then, you know, check this out. You know, whereas we are like really dialing into like one problem that we're solving and one pain that we're going after um, and really isolating, isolating people. But it's, it's been a process. It's been a huge process. And I keep trying to, you know, make shifts to, I, I think we're all just peeling away layers to become more authentic to our true selves, you know? Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, I'm like an ogre, like an onion. I'm still in that process, just like everybody else. Yep. (laughs) Well, it's good. And hopefully we'll perpetually be there, like always improving because it's, it's the journey as well. Um, Okay. So I I want, I was going to actually ask you uh, how you found that you were using what you learned through your own journey and getting to your own personal clarity in your business, but you, you've already kind of gone through that where you talk about like becoming a, a customer manager. I love that. So if, if someone out there is having a hard time, maybe like, let's kind of shift this a little bit tactical. Like if you're having a hard time finding the right leads or getting the, attracting the right people in, whether it's through organic or paid traffic, a lot that comes down to a messaging issue. Um, so do you have, like, have you kind of dialed in what those, some of those steps are to look at and unravel your own clarity and then apply that to finding your customer? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it is not a foreign concept in our world that you need to have a dream customer or an ideal avatar. You hear those words a lot. But where the mistake comes is that they think they have to have one, right? We're talk, we talk all about niching down, niching down, niching down. And I believe in niching down. But I, I think that the problem comes is that human beings are very dynamic, you know? And so like trying to force characteristics into one person what it actually turns out to is like, it's like, it's like we're creating a liger, right? Where it's like, (laughs) I can serve serve lions and tigers. So if I make it one dream customer, it's a liger. And like, but what actually happens then is like, you create ads for ligers and ligers don't exist, like only in Napoleon Dynamite. And so you don't actually create ads or messaging for anybody. And so I work with my clients on a system where we figure out what are the customer segments? We call them customer archetypes. What are the customer segments that you can market to? And then we pick one and we master that one. And then we move on to the next and we master that next one. So for example, I, so I I work with Catherine Jones with, CF design school on her ads. And I have run her ads really since the launch of her course. Cause we were kind of, I, I was learning Facebook ads at the same time she was coming up in the community. And so we were kind of doing this, this thing Which, together. by the way, they work because I, we just bought her program. So yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> so when we first were marketing, we were like, we knew that her products, of course, I mean, it's CF click funnels, design school. So like click funnels, users, funnel builders. So we were appealing to them, but we also knew that like, this was a skill that private contractors could add to their tool belt and be able to uh, charge higher retainers and higher projects for their clients. So we combined the messaging and we said, and we were like, okay, if you're a funnel builder or web designer is essentially like how we did it. And she was making money. She was doing great. But I had this idea one day. I said, what if we separated the two? And what if we did ads just for funnel builders and then separate ads just for freelancers? Because funnel builders, they're looking for higher conversions. They're looking for an escape route from templates, right? Whereas independent contractors, they're looking for an added skill, a shift in their current work, um, the ability to charge higher prices. So like their wants are just, they're, they're different, right? Yep. So. When I separated the ads for both the cost to acquire a client in terms of like how much ad spend dollars we had to spend to get a sale, it went like this. The freelancers went down and the funnel builders went up. And I was like, this is the most confusing thing I've ever seen. Like if anything, you would think that the funnel builders cost would go down and the freelancers would go up or they would stay the same. I, so I dove into her funnel and I was like, what is going on? This is crazy. And what I realized is that her webinar is brilliant. Everyone loves her webinar, but 
it's designed for contractors. In the first three minutes, she says, let me teach you what a funnel is. So if you're already in the ClickFunnels community and you're a, you, you claim yourself as I'm a funnel hacker or I'm a funnel builder, if you're watching that webinar in the first three minutes, she says, let me tell you what a funnel is. What's going to be your mentality? This isn't for me. Yeah, this isn't for me. I'm out. And so they bounce. And so we were like, oh my goodness. Like, even though, and she unintentionally did this, she built her system for con- for private contractors. And so we've spent the last year building an entire system, a separate system for the funnel builders, because that is still a huge, a key part of her audience. So we have her current webinar that goes to freelancers. And then we've built a video sales letter, a short one, like a 19 minute video sales letter that just gets to the point and is like funnel builders, you know, this game, you know what I'm doing to you. Yes, I'm selling you, but let me tell you exactly why. And we just go like, we go right for the punch and it's a much shorter sales process because it's a more educated customer. And now we're seeing the ad costs level out, but they're going to completely different systems. Yep. And just that realization of sending the right message to the right customer and through the right system, it makes all the difference in the world in terms of having a profitable offer and profitable funnel versus one that just is struggling to, to get traction. Yep. And and just to clarify here for people who may not be familiar with funnel terminology, but like sending them to different systems, it's a different sales system, but ultimately the thing that she's selling is still the same thing. It's just yes. a different avatar. It's so, that's so important. It's the exact same offer. It's the same members area. It's even the same sales page and and order form. Yeah. That's probably maybe even a little too tactical, but we literally just like send them two different places and then whoop, we consolidate and, but we're speaking to them very, very differently before they get to the actual buying process. That is so fantastic. What a great tip. I love that. Um, Okay. So you talked a little bit about um, the mistakes, some common mistakes that people make in terms of like thinking they only can have one avatar or the the liger, which I love. (laughs) Um, So what are some other common mistakes that you see people making in terms of dialing in that, that message for the, well, for the sale really? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think that, I mean, where people really, the the two biggest mistakes in terms of their really understanding their customer is they either try to appeal to everyone or they try to appeal to themselves. Like if I had a dollar for any time someone I asked, you know, who's your dream customer? And they said, I know him perfectly. It's me. I'm my dream customer. Like I could get a two comma club award for that. I really could. Like there's just, I hear it all the time. And while you might be a a valid case study. Russell talks about all the time how we always forget the journey that we've gone through to get to where we are. And so we talk techno babble. We forget details of how exactly we felt. Plus we're a sample size of Uno, one, and you cannot make any statistically significant choices on a sample size of one. And so it's so important that like you use yourself as a case study, but like if you're saying, I am my avatar, so I understand it perfectly, then you've been tripped, my friend, (laughs) Um, because that is just simply not the case. So you really need to take the time to talk to your customers. And it's not as hard as people think. I mean, even simple questions that you post in either groups or your profile to just get a pulse on how people think of things. Like for example, as I was like really working through this focus on the dream customer bit, I I call it dream traffic is what I call it in my business. But I asked what comes first, the who or the what of your business? The who being like understanding your dream customer and the what being your product. And it was fascinating. I posted it across like 10 different groups. And in Russell's community, everyone was like, it's the who, it's the who, the who comes first because that is Russell's marching beat that he just beats over and over again. But literally in every single other community, it was either the what comes first or it was mixed. And I was like, that is fascinating. Like the power that a guru has to determine a belief system of people, right? Yep. And so like one of the things, one of the questions that I ask my clients when I bring them on is who are the gurus that they follow? Because the gurus determine the beliefs and it's the beliefs that determine the behaviors and it's the behaviors that you're going after, right? And so 
you have to understand like what is going on in the mind of your customer at a really deep level, even to the degree of who are their gurus, who is shaping their thoughts. And you can find that out like really easily by just asking simple questions in, in groups about your offer, just to see what people think. And a lot of people are scared to ask questions because they're like, I want to show up as an expert. Yeah. You can totally show up as an expert. Like experts ask questions all the time, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, that is um, so true. So anyway, so that that's a couple tips and, and examples of things that I've done to like realize how important the understanding the psychology of your customers are. Those are such great tips. Wow, thank you. And I that is a wonderful tip about paying attention to the gurus that they're following. I mean, I always thought about it in terms of like trying to match the audiences and follow along, like to find where they're at, but to take it that step further and really look at how is it affecting their thought pattern and their behavior? So insightful. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then also, I mean, cause like the gurus, they can determine belief patterns in terms of how they come at things. And it can also determine like what also people don't realize is, is, is they're one dimensional with certain things. For example, like Russell always talks about how like messaging is either you're either driving people away from pain or towards pleasure. So people will often put their product in one category where they're like, my product drives people to pleasure or my product moves people away from pain. But like, and this, this is something that I learned with the whole Corona um, experience and the COVID experience that we've had is that the entire world shifted, no matter where people were naturally oriented the whole world shifted to moving away from pain. And so any client that I had at the time who was, had messaging that was towards pleasure, we completely did a pivot in the messaging and we moved it away towards pain and every single one across the board, all their sales went up. And it showed me that like, you can't box a product into like, this is a towards pleasure product, or this is a away from pain product. Like, no, like, try it from both angles because you might find that there's a certain segment of the market that will react to one over the other. Um, And so I've actually, with my new clients, uh, I've just started where part of our test campaigns, we have a towards pleasure campaign and we have an away from pain campaign just to see like, where's your market at? You know, and it's the same audiences across both. So it's just, it's literally like an AB test with messaging, Yeah. but it's not that it's one or the other. It's that both can work, but like, what is bringing in the people? And then are they bringing in the people that you want? I mean, you might have one type of messaging that works really well, but maybe you hate working with those people and you're like, oh my goodness, they're such a suck on my energy. If that's the case, stop that messaging and, and, and go the other way, you know? Right. Oh my gosh. That is that is a great tip because yeah, we do, I mean, for years and years, like that's, that is the marketing message, but it has a lot of times been it's one or the other. Yeah. So I love the idea of using both finding messaging all about those hidden benefits or either way. (laughs) For sure. And and that's the benefit of Facebook ads is it allows you to be really nimble to test those things very quickly. You know, you can put a hundred bucks to both sides and within 200 bucks and a day, if you're willing to spend that much in a day, you can figure out your messaging, like just like that, you know? Yep. Oh, so fantastic. I love it. Thank you. All right. So one thing that I love to ask people is on this journey that you've been through here, what is something that's completely surprising that has happened to you personally or in your business or something that when you first started down this path, you never thought would even happen? Hmm. That is a good question. Um, I think honestly, the biggest thing for me is the shift of how I look at money and I realized this happened to me like just, just a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to my roommate have a conversation with um, one of her family members and she was like, Hey, like, what are you guys up to tonight? And they were like, Oh, your dad and I, we're, we've just been out um, doing DoorDash and Uber Eats for the evening. It was like a fun, like couple activity. And my roommate was like, wow, that's awesome. Good job. And, and her mom was like, yeah, we made 65 bucks in the last three hours. And I literally like, it's not judgment, but it just, it showed me like how much my mind has changed. I literally was like, oh my gosh, like what? Like, I mean, they probably spent at least 20 in gas. So like they're netting 40 bucks, like 40 bucks over three hours of time. That's $13 an hour. And I was just like, oh, 
I couldn't, I couldn't do that. But I remember, I remember a day when I could, you know, and it wasn't that long ago. Yep. And, um, I'm noticing the same thing happen in my agency, you know, my, I'm, I'm getting higher known clients. And so the services of my agency and my time are becoming more valuable. And so I'm able to charge more for those services because of the results I'm getting and the quality of people that I'm blessed to work with. And it's the same thing, you know, like now a retainer that I would have accepted a year ago now, like it kind of makes me sick, you know? (laughs) And I'm, and it's just, it's just fascinating how my, my view of money like I, I, I knew I've always wanted to make a lot of money to have resources to bless my family and help people. Cause I, I think that money is energy and that all it does is it magnifies who we are already. So it magnifies our awesomeness, but it also magnifies our crappiness. <laughs> and so it's a great magnifying glass to teach us like where we have good seeds and where we have bad seeds inside. Um, and not that it's bad, but like seeds that we don't necessarily want to nurture. And, oh man, it's just been fascinating just to see, you know, and my tolerance for risk because of that, you know, as my views of money change, you know, I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll drop five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand on that opportunity just to see. Whereas like before I would have been like, no, 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 no. Like that is so much money, you know? Yep. So, um, and it's been cool. It's been really, really cool. So. It is definitely a fun journey and, and you don't even realize it until you look back and then you're like, Oh yeah, that's changed. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing everything and all the great tips and being so vulnerable. I really appreciate it. And for all your time. <laughs> of course, it has just been an absolute joy being here. And uh, yeah, I hope, I hope that your listeners are just going to take a nugget and run with it. Plenty there to choose from for sure. So, all right. So, and if they want to find out more about working with you or the services and things that you offer, um, where can everybody go find more about you? Totally. Yeah. And I appreciate you for giving me the opportunity to mention this. So if you want to follow my journey on the socials, you can friend me on Facebook, Lisanne Murphy. I think, I don't know. I don't know if there's any other Lisanne Murphy's, but apparently I could only get like Lisanne Murphy dot three for like my Facebook you are <laughs> um, on Instagram. I'm Lisanne Murphy HQ and I, I have a podcast myself um, that, that you've actually been amazing with helping me spread that content across so many platforms. So guys, like I'm going to put this one back on Jen. Like if you're needing help with content distribution with your podcast, Jen is the lady. So I, I run the marketing matrix podcast so you can tune into all kinds of marketing goodness there. And then we also um, have conversations specifically around Facebook ads in my Facebook group. Uh, So you can join that. It's called Facebook ads for coaches, course creators, and lifestyle brands. And the link for that is facebook.com slash groups slash FB ad ninjas. It's like Facebook ad ninjas, FB ad ninjas. Um, So yeah, come join the conversation. Listen chat, follow, like, subscribe, all the things. Um, and lo- would love to, would love to have you in my world. Awesome. Definitely go check it out. Thanks for the, uh, the shout out there. I'll pay you later. Um, but no, seriously, you guys follow, follow the sound. She's amazing. <laughs> and so thank you again for all your time. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for having me. Bye.